The immediate threat posed by climate change is on full display in Greenland. Glaciers there are melting at an alarming pace, which could lead to a devastating sea level rises. NASA, uh, NASA climate scientists are investigating the crisis. Our Freddie Pleiken joined the scientists on one of their missions. Tell us, first of all, why, why NASA are investigating mm. this and what you actually found. Well, they're investigating it because climate change has just accelerated so much over the past couple of years. And the thing that they are telling us mm. it was their early findings is they say, look, a lot of people, when they talk about climate change and the, uh, the ice smell that's induced by climate change, many people think it's warmer air that's essentially melting a giant ice cube. Mm -hmm. That is the, the ice shield in the Arctic. But they say that they're finding that warmer ocean temperatures are also having a significant effect, uh, not just because of the warmer uh, temperatures themselves, but also because of ocean currents that are really leading to a lot of attrition on those glaciers. Very interesting to see what those NASA scientists are doing. Here's what we saw. Take off from a tiny airfield in South Greenland. NASA embarking on its mission to map how warmer ocean water is melting Arctic ice. Chief scientist Josh Willis shows me the probes they're launching all around Greenland. It's like dropping thermometers into the sea. They go out of the plane, right through this tube right here. They fall down to the ocean. And then they separate into two parts. Part falls uh, all the way down to the sea floor. So it gives us a profile from the surface to the bottom on the shelf. We've reached today's drop zone, the massive Helheim Glacier. What you're seeing from our cockpit camera is not even the glacier itself. It's just the ice it's lost in the past days. And this goes on for miles. It is absolutely awe-inspiring to see the size of this glacier to see how much ice is coming off that glacier that's obviously then going to flow into the world's oceans. It is one of the largest glaciers in Greenland. The amount of activity is just absolutely overwhelming. But the scientists spot an ice-free zone right at the mouth of the glacier. It's pretty unusual. With great precision, they have to drop a probe right in that pond. Two, one. Drop, drop, drop. 14 away. I see water. Bullseye. In the, in the drink. Perfect. I saw it, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, wow. I see it. But the readouts they get are troubling. Warm water along the entire depth of the glacier, more than 2,000 feet below the surface. And these warm waters now are able to be in direct contact with the ice over its entire face, supercharging the melting. And it's not just this glacier. The ice melt has been supercharged in all of Greenland recently. This year is on pace to set a record for ice melt here in the Arctic. And the NASA scientists are finding out that it's not just hotter air, but also warmer ocean water that's causing a lot of the attrition that's making these glaciers lose so much ice. While it may look majestic, the ice melt is also dangerous. These billions of tons of ice are causing sea levels to rise. The scientists from NASA's Oceans Melting Greenland project saying all of us need to pitch in to try and slow down global warming or face the consequences. There's enough ice in Greenland to raise sea levels by seven and a half meters. So it's an enormous volume of ice. That's about 25 feet. And that would be devastating to coastlines all around the planet. The changes to our planet's environment drop, drop. can already clearly be seen here in Greenland. A remote Arctic paradise whose warming climate will affect us all. It's really quite a humbling experience, actually, to fly with these guys. One of the things that I found interesting is we were speaking to some local folks there in Greenland, mm. and they were telling us that, you know, they, they've been witnessing this firsthand, how these glaciers have not only receded, some of them by, by kilometers, but they've also gotten a lot thinner, a lot lower, so that ice melt can clearly be seen and felt there. I was surprised what they said, there's seven and a half meters. Yeah. Into, that's, that's huge. That's a lot, and, that's a lot. and, that, and I asked them, look, is, uh, what can we do to slow this yeah. down? Uh, what can we do about this? And they said it, it, it really is cutting emissions is the thing to do because that's what's driving warming in the entire planet, not just the air, but of course then the oceans as well. But they also said right now the pace at which things are mm. going, people need to start thinking about moving away from coastal areas in certain places. How, on, on the question of trying to cut emissions, mm. do they believe that 
the Paris Climate Accord that we've got go, that's now in place, it's, it's you know many countries are trying to abide mm. that. Do they feel that that is enough? to kind of I trying think, to avert, yeah, to slow I, it down in any sort of way. Right? I think from, from, from what a lot of those scientists that we saw, it's, it, that's a hub for scientists there. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them, they will tell you, we are indeed in a phase generally of, of global climate warming, but that man-made activity is really accelerating that to a great degree. And of course, uh, the Paris Climate Accord is not something that, that I think people think is perfect or that will solve things, right, but it yeah. certainly is at least a start and something on which to build when things really become bad. And I think one of the things that we've noticed, mm. um, and, and you and I, I think, have noticed over reporting on this topic, is that for a lot more people than before, this is not a secondary issue anymore. No, a lot of people are feeling that shifted. so they talk about every day. You feel a younger generation already protesting and saying that more needs to be done to save the world's climate because they're seeing things like this and they're seeing other things where the climate's really going out of control. Look, I've been reporting on the environment yeah. for CNN, for, for CNN Vision for three years, and this is the first time I've actually felt that it's not just a small group of people. Yeah. It's, it's, but it's now a question of what can be done. What can be done and what political way, will is there yeah, to do this? Because in the end, a lot of it still is a, a trade-off between Un, you know, between economic, large economic growth and trying to do something for the environment, and how can you how can you fit both into one, make it envir eco economically sound yeah. to actually do things that then will hopefully help save the environment. And crucially well. for our leaders to actually believe yes. in science. Let's it, start is, with that, right? Yeah, that, that's what it starts <laughs> with.